Welcome to Things You Should Know, Civil War Edition. Today we're going to talk about the Second Battle of Fredericksburg, located in Fredericksburg, Virginia, on the 3rd and 4th of May, 1863. The Second Battle of Fredericksburg is one of many smaller battles that were part of the overall large Battle of Chancellorville. While larger forces fought at Chancellorville proper, more than 14 miles east, Union Major General John Sedgwick and his Sixth Corps, along with Union General John Gibbon's division, took this time to assault the defensive positions of one of our returning favorites, Confederate Major General Jubal A. Early and his division. General Early had been left to defend Fredericksburg by Robert E. Lee himself. Along with Early's division was William Barksdale's brigade and extra cannon and artillery reserve unit. Early's job was to ensure that the Union forces did not try to flank General Lee at Chancellorville and to warn General Lee of any incoming attack. Meanwhile, Union General John Sedgwick had been ordered to distract the Confederate forces and to make it appear that the Union may be pushing heavily into Early's position as a feint maneuver, hoping to draw Confederate forces away. To do this, Sedgwick and his men captured several crossing points on April 29th and built pontoon bridges. On May 3rd, Sedgwick could see Fredericksburg and was able to meet up with Union General John Gibbon and his men. Sedgwick's initial plan was stalled when he found out that the ends of Mary's Heights, his target, was blocked by a stream and a canal. However, instead of stopping, he shifted his plan of attack and decided to attack right up the middle. General Sedgwick, known as Uncle John to his men, was confident that they could take the hill. This was the same hill that had thwarted Union General Ambrose Burnside in the First Battle of Fredericksburg. Long live sideburns. The 62nd New York and 102nd Pennsylvania regiments were able to push up that first day within 20 steps of the stone wall. As you would expect, however, with an attack up the middle, the Confederate soldiers were waiting, and they destroyed the Union's forward momentum, causing the most casualties of the battle here. Union forces were pushed back, and Confederate Thomas M. Griffin, commander of the 18th Mississippi Infantry, agreed to allow Union forces to take their wounded. As is always said, no good deed goes unpunished, and not to let an opportunity go to waste, Union leaders noticed while they were retrieving their wounded that Confederate Commander Barksdale's left regiment's flank was unprotected. Before 10 a.m. the next day, Sedgwick had a plan and he moved forward. With the 5th Wisconsin and 6th Maine Infantry Regiments in the lead, the Union forces pushed Barksdale's men off that ridge using the weak flank location they had noticed when they were retrieving their wounded. This resulted in capturing the Confederate artillery, and they proceeded to continually push Barksdale back no matter how many times the Confederates attempted to rally. Unfortunately for Colonel Thomas de M. Griffin, the Confederate leader here, he was captured in the Battle for the Height. Eventually, Barksdale rallied at Lee's Hill for a final stand, but once again the Union forces rolled over him resulting in Confederate General Jubal A. Early taking his men and withdrawing more than two miles south. This action was successful for the Union. When Confederate leader Robert E. Lee heard of the loss, he split his already outnumbered forces and turned two divisions east to stop what he believed to be another major force about to assault him. Meanwhile, Confederate Generals Barksdale and Early had engaged in heated arguments and blaming, not seen anywhere else but in high school social media posts. Nowadays, we see drama between politicians and military personnel and think it is a new thing, or a sign that our current generations are not as tough or stoic as before. Nothing could be further from the truth. They all are drama-filled. This was true back in the Civil War, and pretty much for all other political or military engagements. This has always been the case where important people succumb to childish fighting. This included such things as Drupal A. Early sending a letter to the papers after this battle complaining about Barksdale. In response, Barksdale sent his own article to the same papers. It got bad enough that in the end, Robert E. Lee officially ordered both men to stop victory. Don't worry, there may be videos in the future about this sort of drama. Meanwhile, Union General Sedgwick followed orders and instead of pursuing Early and his forces, turned west on Plank Road and moved forward to meet up with General Hooker's army for the Battle of Chancellorville proper. Estimated casualties were 1,100 killed, wounded, and missing for Sedgwick and his Union forces. Meanwhile, 700 men were killed, wounded, and missing, along with four cannons for Drupal A. Early's Confederate forces. Join us again next time for Things You Should Know, Civil War Edition.